first meeting with Prime Minister Modi um, started with a disagreement. Yes, it did. The book uh, describes Dr. Manmohan Singh to be non-existent in phases. I would say that he was a great expert, but I won't call him a great leader, which I would call Mr. Modi. Mr. Modi may not be that great an expert, but he's a great leader. You know, ministers don't speak. I mean, in the meetings, I used to say, everyone used to say yes. The only ministers who spoke were Arun Jaitley and Nitin Gadkari. I distinctly remember I was sitting at the Red Port on 15th August, and Mr. Modi was speaking out. Many of the statements that we made was factually incorrect. So I sent an SMS to Mr. Nabeel Mishra. I said, this is factually incorrect. Okay. You do use it. Thing happened. Our first meeting with Prime Minister Modi um, started with a disagreement. Yes, it did. And not many people disagree openly or directly with the Prime Minister. And in fact, in your upcoming book that deals with your encounters with varied Prime Ministers and politicians, you talk about how a an official in the Prime Minister's office was actually asked that you had dared to disagree with Prime Minister Modi. Can we start there? Yes, you can. You know, I got into a bad habit of speaking my mind out. And it was too late in the day. I had put in about 33 years as an IS officer when I became coal secretary. And I couldn't hold myself. I didn't want to hold myself. I, I had always been of the view that speak your mind out. Because uh, whoever is the minister or the prime minister will stand to benefit from your view. He may disagree. Ultimately, he's the decision maker. But I had always believed, don't deprive him of your view. If you have a view and there is a reason view, come up with that. I said that. And when this occasion arose uh, in my first meeting with the Prime Minister, I had just taken over as school secretary. And there was a meeting organized at the residence of the Prime Minister, where there weren't very many people. Uh, the first presentation was made by the power secretary. And the six slides that he showed, in all those slides, he mentioned that the power problem was on account of coal. So then the Prime Minister turned towards me, Anil ji, aapne dekha? पावर की समस्त समस्याएं कोल की वजह से हैं आप कोल सेक्टर को ठीक कर दीजिए देश की आर्थिक स्थिति सुधर जाएगी आई रिमेंबर इज वर्ड्स सो आई सेट सर मैं आपसे सहमत हूं आप सही कह रहे हैं कोल में गंभीर समस्याएं हैं लेकिन कदाचित यह उचित नहीं होगा कहना कि समस्त पावर की समस्याएं कोल की वजह से हैं हमें शायद कोल के सेक्टर को पावर के सेक्टर को कॉम्प्रीहेंसिवली देखना होगा उन्होंने कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव शब्द पकड़ लिया और इमिडिएटली मुझसे अग्री कर गए Bole, Haan, Anil ji, sahi rahe. And then he turned towards Mr. Piyush Goel, who was the power and coal minister. He said, Anil ji, sahi rahe. Uh, hume se comprehensively dekhna hoga. And the meeting ended there. Hmm. And after that meeting, it was said to you, ki, bhai, aapne ye kaise bol diya? He, I, I, it was not said on that occasion. It was much later. Another where, disagreement over health insurance. Yes, that was my last meeting with the PM. You know, that's why I say that in my first meeting, I had a disagreement with him. He agreed with that me. That was an amiable disagreement. Amiable. Now, in the second meeting, you argued over health insurance and he wasn't that happy. No, what had happened was uh, for three years, the government had been trying to come up with a re replacement for Rashtriya Swat Bima Yojana which was perceived to be a health insurance scheme of the previous government. So after struggling for three years. Which uh, you had actually birthed. That, that uh, yeah, long ago, 2008. Yes. So the principal secretary to Prime Minister rang me up. <clears throat> he said, Anil, uh, Sham ko, uh, Prime Minister se hum log health insurance discuss kar rahe hain. Uh, tum aake brief kar do. So I was a bit surprised because I was then holding the charge of secretary school education. So I said, I'm school, dekh hon, mera kya बोले नहीं नहीं हम लोग पिछले तीन साल से कोशिश कर रहे हैं और समझा नहीं पा रहे हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस को और प्राइम मिनिस्टर थोड़ा नाराज हुआ था इंश्योरेंस का नाम सुन के तो देखो अगर तुम बता सको उनको तो मैंने कहा साहब मेरी डांट पड़वाएंगे तो हंसने लगे बोले नहीं नहीं तुम आओ तब मैंने कहा कि साहब मेरा लोकल स्टैंड है क्या है बोले ऐसा करते हैं कि आज हेल्थ का है रिव्यू हम एजुकेशन का भी कर देते हैं तुम्हें बुलाया जाएगा अगर तुमसे पूछते हैं प्राइम मिनिस्टर तो बता देना हमने कहा ठीक शाम को हम लोग पहुंचे करीब सात बजे करीब अगेन एट इज रेजिडेंस हम लोग सात आठ लोग थे इंक्लूडिंग द देन फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर मिस्टर अरुण जेटली द हेल्थ सेक्रेटरी वाज देयर शी मेड अ प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस अगेन एंड आफ्टर द प्रेजेंटेशन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर डिंट लुक वेरी हैप्पी एंड ही देन ही टर्न्स टुवर्ड्स मी अनिल आप रहे हैं हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस तो आपने देखा है आपकी क्या राय है और मेरी राय एग्जैक्टली वही थी जो हेल्थ सेक्रेटरी ने कही थी तो मैंने उनको समझाया पंद्रह मिनट में बोला 
और एक तक मुझे सुनते रहे यू नो जनरल इंप्रेशन अबाउट द पी एम एस दट ही स्पीक्स अलॉट इन मीटिंग ही डजन एंड इज अ वेरी पेशेंट लिसनर ही डेंट इंटरप्ट मी आई स्पोक फॉर फिफ्टीन मिनट्स एंड आई सेट एग्जैक्टली द सेम थिंग विद द हेल्थ सेक्रेटरी एट सेट कोर्स आई हैड गिवन आई गिव हम अ वेरी सॉलिड रीजन वाई इंश्योरेंस शुड बी ही लिसन टू मी एट द एंड ऑफ इट इज ही सेट अनिल जी आप सही कह रहे हैं दैट डे आयुष्मान भारत वॉज बॉर्न ऑफकोर्स इट वॉज क्रिस्टन लेटर ऑन बट दैट डे सो वेन आई वॉज कमिंग आउट ऑफ द रूम वन ऑफ द ज्वाइंट सेक्रेटरीज ऑफ द पी एम ओ हू वॉज प्रेजेंट इन द मीटिंग ही आज मी सर आपको तो पता था नाराज हो जाते हैं हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस का नाम सुन के इंश्योरेंस का नाम आपने फिर भी वही बात कह दी मैंने कहा देखो यार मुझे ना उनसे आज कुछ लेना है ना रिटायरमेंट के बाद कुछ लेना है जो मैंने उचित समझा उनको बता दिया नहीं समझ में आता कोई बात नहीं यू नो एज आई सेट दिस वॉज ऑफ कोर्स द लास्ट ईयर ऑफ माई करियर इट वॉज इन मार्च एंड आई रिटायर्ड इन जून बट मच बिफोर दैट इट्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ हैबिट दैट यू डेवलप एंड यू कैंट चेंज इट एट You're mm-hmm. outspoken, and you can't help that. Uh, you can use that word outspoken. No, no, no. I, I said oh, what I. But you just speak your mind. Yes. Now your 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 book chronicles your encounters with different politicians. Among them, uh, two prime ministers. I would like to talk a little bit more about than the others because you worked. You actually worked with them, Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. I didn't work with. Well, them. not yeah. with them, yeah. but you had a chance to work mm-hmm. in the government at a mm-hmm. high level yes. when they were Prime Minister. Yes. Let me, let me phrase myself accurately. आपने मोदी साहब के साथ जो दो इनकाउंटर्स हुए आपने बताया उनके बारे में यू यू कैन सी प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी इन शेड्स ऑफ ग्रे यू कैन सी हिज प्लस पॉइंट्स एंड यू आल्सो स्पीक अबाउट हाउ डीमोनेटाइजेशन इन सम वेज वाज अ टर्निंग पॉइंट इन योर परसेप्शन ऑफ हिम यस आई आई हैड अ ग्रेट टाइम व्हेन आई वाज स्कूल सेक्रेटरी विद द प्राइम मिनिस्टर Uh, he, in fact he recognized me in front of 100 secretaries he used to host this uh, quarterly tea with uh, secretaries and in one of them he mentioned my name he said dekhi anil ji ne kitna badhiya kaam kiya coal block auction mein he was very fond of me yeah and i distinctly recall he is very impressed with the technology that i was using for coal block auction as was one of the very few officers that had gone totally digital so we didn't have paper of files in coal ministry he was, he was very attracted to it and then he used to keep asking me about ki aur kya kar raha hai technology mein so i had a great relationship with him but i i mean that's my perception of him something went wrong after demonetization i yes, put my i can't put my finger what went wrong because you know i found him losing his school you know he used to get very angry on occasions which after was demonetization. after demonetization you're saying before demonetization he was a much calmer leader. much calmer much more decisive you know you know we used to joke I remember we were sitting in a meeting till about eight thirty in the evening, and then he had his iPad or whatever pad in front of him. And he's quite a tech buff. He's a tech buff, and he said, "Arey, bada late ho gaya apni ghadi ki taraf. Aap logo to ghar jana ho. Mujhe kya hai? Main to ghar jaunga to main isi ke saath kehi dunga." You know, these are the terms that he used. He put everyone at ease. Yeah. So everyone came out. Post demonetization, I don't know what happened. I'm just putting post demonetization because that's where I saw the change. He became tentative. He became aggressive. I think he became insecure as well, hmm. and all this Why? was. Why? Prob- I mean, he's electorally powerful. I, his popularity, you know, I, as I, 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 I remain high. As I said, I can't put my finger on it, but this is what I observed. And you know, another thing which I noted was, Mr. Arun Jaitley played a very important role in making him what he was. You know, he was a troubleshooter. He he, he was the man who was solving problems. He also for him. had friends across. Absolutely, the you know he. Mr Arun Jaitley reminded me of whatever little I heard saw of Mr Atal Bihari Vajpayee consensus builder he's a consensus builder you know i walked away with all the credit for coal block auction i think a lot of credit goes to arun jaitley now he was not my minister hmm. here was a guy who was interacting with people like navin patnaik uh, mamta banerji opposition chief ministers bringing them on board i have i've written my books that this is what is required you know we can't have a war with the state governments we have to get them along arun jaitley did that so you believe that post demonetization and post arun jaitley something changed in prime minister modi i i would believe that because he had such a calming influence on him and he was one of the very few guys who could openly disagree with him or give him advice for example i was in favor of commercial option of coal mines hmm. right my minister was it He said, "Kuch bawal ho jayega." Hmm. I said, "Sir, dekhenge bawal kya hoga." So I remember in a in a informal discussion, PM Arun Jaitley, Mr. Piyush Goyal, and myself. And Arun Jaitley comes up with this. He he asked me in a discussion. It came about commercial mining. Arun Jaitley says, 
कि सर ये अनिल जी सही कह रहे हैं कि अभी करा लीजिए चुनाव के आसपास इसको नहीं करा पाएंगे एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर अग्रीड विद मी अग्रीड विद अरुण जेटली बट दैट फाइल ने मूव द फाइल वॉज सिटिंग विद मिनिस्टर इट मूव आफ्टर फाइव ईयर्स सो इमेजिन इफ दिस कमर्शियल माइनिंग एड हैपन अर्लियर सो अरुण जेटली प्लेड अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल यू नो आई so you have been impressed with the prime minister in his decisiveness yes. his ability to listen but you feel that something changed let me yeah, go so ahead. let me explain this to you you know i it's difficult to find such a decisive leader hmm. because i as you were mentioning though i'd never worked with manmohan singh i could perceive the indecision in that level the book uh, describes dr manmohan singh to be non existent in phases Yes, not, I did not exist. You no, know, I I used to. What do you mean by that? I, do you I, mean his leadership was not? Existing? No, he was as a person. He was a low-profile person. I am not saying it's good, bad, or ugly. But a prime minister has to be present. Hmm. He has to be visible. You know, may not be as visible as some others are. But you have to be there. You have to be a great communicator. Hmm. You may be an expert, but if you are unable to come, you know, convey to your team your intention, what you want to do, it has to be very visible. some people don't realize it you know you can be a quiet expert you can be a quiet finance minister but you can't be a quiet prime minister you have to engage with people you have to motivate people i mean it's not that there was anything wrong with him that was his temperament that was that is what he was you know he, i would say that he was a great expert but i won't call him a great leader which i would call mr modi mr modi may not be that great an expert but he is a great leader you know he motivates people he takes people along he is decisive he is perceptive so was mr manmohan singh is very perceptive but he couldn't push things they if even if he wanted to push things he was not a pusher test modi on that if he likes an idea he'll push it and take it to the logical conclusion one of the things you also said is that who a leader surrounds them you know him or herself with will impact the kind of leader that they will be and you have spoken about an over centralized wielding of power in which not enough people post arun jetli are speaking their mind to the prime minister in the prime minister's office i think if i have to put my finger on one thing this is it i mean you have a very centralized governance system and pmo determines almost everything and i can say that with my experience in four years as secretary government of india even trivial things used to be referred like, to pmo choti si baat you know you had interviewed me some time ago on cbse paper leak yes you know? for holding that press conference minister said we should speak to the pmo i told him sir iski kya zarurat hai nahi 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 nah, baat kar lete i was surprised i said why should a minister ask the pmo for holding a press conference i'm just giving you one example that is a, you know that's that's what it was for every issue you go to the pmo i used to wonder you know why can't it be i mean if it's a national issue important issue there is a one cbse cbse is one organization in uh, education ministry mm. uh, impacting not even 2% of the students in the country and you're going to pmo for a press conference mm. so we went there so too much centralization now if you have so much centralization you must have that wherewithal sitting in the pmo first too much centralization is not good it should be decentralized yeah. but let us say for argument say that yes it is okay then you should have that core sitting there who are able to take quick decision tell you in this particular case i got a response immediately from the pmo but in so many other cases look at the vacancies that exist at directors level and psus main to ladta tha cool india ke liye but sab ladte nahi hai to kya hai so many vacancies why because everything is sitting so there so if you have to if you have to identify the problem is it over centralization or is it that bureaucrats around him or ministers around him don't speak plainly enough don't speak bluntly enough both because if you have decentralized existence then you can live with such civil servants who are not outspoken but if you have over centralization then if you don't have such people sitting there you are in trouble but many of these civil servants are your friends your colleagues your juniors uh, do they ever talk about no one has the courage to talk about it who talks about it no one talks about it informally they say dosti yaar ye to baat hoti hai informally they say everyone confesses to this informally that there is too much centralization no one speak it out in the open but there is indeed everyone says that this has happened in india before indira gandhi's yes. prime minister's office was yes. at least what one reads was exactly like this yes and look at the consequences so you know but the flip side is dr manmohan singh's prime minister's it office. was the other it was the other extreme so, you know you have two extremes yes you had somebody sitting there 
and with so many power centers, almost every minister was going haywire. And the PMO had no clue what's going on. No clue. Every in, in, in Manmohan Singh. In Manmohan Singh. Now everything centralized. I mean, we have to have something in between. You have to give this power to the ministers to do what they... Ministers don't speak. I mean, in the meetings, I used to say, everyone used to say yes. The only ministers who spoke were Arun Jaitley and Nitin Gadkari. Nitin Gadkari also was very outspoken. He spoke his mind. So, these are the only two ministers you have witnessed speaking, being themselves. Being themselves. And Baki? Baki koi nahi bolta tha. Bahar khub bolte tha kai. Andar chup. Which is very unfortunate. You know, in informal chats with some of them, I used to tell them, tell me what is it. It is in his own interest. You know, I feel sad about it. Because here is a leader who can actually deliver. You know, I must give it to Mr. Modi. He is capable of delivering. So, he should get that feedback. Whether he likes it or not. You know, I remember I used to have ongoing battle with the PMO because I had worked early with Mr. Nifayan Mishra. And I used to tell him, sir, why don't you tell I used to tell him, sir, you are wrong, Prime Minister. I distinctly remember I was sitting at the Red Fort on 15th August. And Mr. Modi was speaking out. Many of the statements that we made was factually incorrect. So, I sent an SMS to Mr. Nifayan Mishra. I said, this is factually incorrect. You, 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 nothing happened. You know, I told him, Prime Minister is announcing that the India government has set up the project monitoring group. I said I was the first chairman of the project monitoring group in UP. Are you saying Prime Minister Modi has been let down by his bureaucrats? You know, that would be too far reaching a statement. Uh, he, he has a choice to select his civil servants. I mean, who decides who are going to be around him? But I do feel whoever is around him should have the courage to tell him. I mean, courage in the sense that he will benefit from him. So, for example, if the Prime Minister makes a factually incorrect, you, know, you can have a view, you can make a political statement, I have nothing to say. But he is making a factually incorrect statement. It is the job of the civil servant around him to tell him, Sir, ye galat. Uske baad, he may still decide to speak the wrong thing. My view is, you know, you can't expect the Prime Minister to be correct on all the facts. There will be occasions when he will be wrong. Someone has the courage, should have the courage. The fact that he is repeatedly making those statements means that no one is telling him. If someone were to tell him, he will work out a system and have a filtering process so that he gets only which are factually correct. Let's speak about the predecessor to, 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 to Prime Minister Modi, Manmohan Singh. You said that was the other extreme. Yes. But as I said, your book is a bit, I wouldn't use the word scathing. There's respect for Dr. Singh's uh, expertise and experience, but somehow a big disappointment with him as a leader. You know, because he was not a leader. I mean, I'm, he did not have those leadership traits. He was a great man. He was a very fine gentleman. He was an expert, but certainly not a leader, let us accept that as a fact. Once you give him that, then he was in the wrong position there. Why? Because Prime Minister has to be, as he keeps saying, visible. Look at the other aspect of it. You know, I'm still unable to come to grips with what Manmohan Singh did in the so-called coal scam. He said that I was wrongly briefed. And Mr. Harish Gupta faced the flag. The now, former coal secretary. Yes. How can oh, you... Just for context for our yeah. audience, the former coal secretary was said to be by his colleagues one of the most honest, upright bureaucrats. And then he was implicated yes. in the coal scam that you have argued was not a scam at all. See, what had happened was, I'm not going into the details of it yes. because it will take another hour to do that. But when the file goes to a PMO, then it is examined at length. Now, Prime Minister can, can't wash away and say that I was misled. No, if he was misled, so was Mr. Harish Gupta. You know, my, my take is none of them is responsible. I mean, Secretary of the Government of India cannot be held responsible for a wrong document placed on a file. He's not supposed to look at it. I've been in that position. Even I can be hauled up for a document because I can't send every document to a thana for verification. Even that will not work. So, Harish Gupta sahab was not at fault. Now, let's take for argument he was at fault, right? Then the entire committee was at fault. So was the coal minister or stroke the prime minister who signed the file. I was a bit surprised because I, I still rate Dr. Manmohan Singh as one of the most honest politicians that we've had in the country. I don't know why he did that. Again, some wrong advice. A leader will never do that. A leader will stand by his team and try and defend the team. So you're saying Manmohan Singh abandoned, in a way, yes. his officials yes. during the yes. allegations of the coal scheme. Absolutely. And washed his hands of something yes. and therefore was a poor leader in that moment. Not only on that count, you know, there are, I mean, if you think of a leader, he has to have certain traits. He should be able to motivate people around him. And that can happen through communication. 
Now he was a great expert, as I keep saying, he's a fine person, but not a great you motivator. You are not a fan of Mr. Vinod Rai, who not just a sort of uh, put the 2G and the telecom licenses on the national headlines, but also the coal scam that you have since long argued was not a scam. You have also said Vinod Rai should apologize to India and to his colleagues. I have not said that he should apologize. Something like that. I have said that he, he, only he knows why he did what he did. Because he didn't act like a CAG. He actually like, acted like an accountant. He writes a book, not just an accountant. But I think he acted like an accountant. Why? Because a CAG will go into evaluating each of the mines and come to conclusions. You can't have generalities. You can't have this is the cost of mining because cost of mining varies from 300 rupees per ton to 3000 rupees per ton depending on where the coal is and you can't say this is the average cost of mining and thereby this is the return and you say this is the this is what is the notional loss it doesn't work that way he did that more importantly i think after having committed that wrong i don't think he did it consciously but whatever may have been the reason he goes to the media or his team goes to the media and announces in a media you, the job of a CAG is to submit the report to the parliament, not go to town with it, not go to media with it. That created an atmos- atmosphere which I suffered. You know, when I when I was coal secretary, no officer wanted to commit himself on the file. We did coal block auction. In some of the files, the initial recommendation by was by the secretary government of India. It has never happened earlier. So you're saying there was an environment where no bureaucrat wanted to put his or her Name on the file. Absolutely. So governance and the move, decision suffered. making. Suffered. It suffered. Why do you think Vinod Rai did what he did? I don't know. He will have to answer that question. I am surprised because he was known to be an honest, efficient officer. Why he did what he did, only he can answer. I can't say How why. How would you describe looking back with the benefit of, benefit of hindsight? Because at that time, there was this sense of the Manmohan Singh government being under siege, one scam after another. Now many years pass, these cases go to court, they just... They, they, they're not able to stand, uh, as it were, in court. The, everybody agrees that Mr. Gupta, as the former coal secretary in particular, uh, was treated unfairly. When you look back at Vinod Rai, like if you met Vinod Rai just now, what would you say to him about that time? I will ask him this question that you have asked me. Why did you do what you did? I'll ask him. I'll Who let do you him. think he let down? Everybody. He let down the entire bureaucracy. Forget anything else. I have seen personally the consequences of what he did. Not many people know that because I was right there Mm. after the devastation that he caused. I was in that ministry. It was like walking into a graveyard. CBI after officers, after files. It was a shocker, absolutely. Yes, there were wrongs committed. I was going to say that there were, it's not, let's not pretend that everything was hunky-dory, that there wasn't policy manipulation, that there wasn't corruption. There was corruption, there were wrongs done. But you know, he should have gone into the details of identifying what was wrong, not coming in with general statements. Mm-hmm. So th- this mine could have been wrongly located. This mine could have been wrongly located. Fix the responsibility of why it was done. It can't be across the board. Look at what happens thereafter. Mr. Rai says after 2004, all mines should be cancelled. Supreme Court goes to 90s and does it. I mean, how do you do that? So it caused so much devastation because the environment that it got created. You know, that is why, you know, there are so many CAG reports, even now you have CAG reports, they'll keep coming. It's a question of how they are positioned. It's the positioning that was... And what, how do you think he positioned it? He, he got, went to town. So you think he did it for He shouldn't have. I, that only he knows. You know, I don't want to comment on, you know, why? my impression. Only he knows why he did it. I the find consequence it was... Devastating. Because decision making stopped. Yes. And I have said that. And that's obviously not the case today. You have a very decisive leader. Absolutely. You know, in any case, during that time, many decisions were not being taken. Right. <laughs> and you have another CG report. Even That's why the PLG was set up. You know, I was asked by the Prime Minister and the uh, Finance Minister that you fast track decisions. You know, at a time when all scams were breaking out. Mm. I was called and I was asked to join the Cabinet Secretariat, head the project monitor group to fast track projects at a time when scams were breaking out. And then? And then it happened. We were we managed to demonstrate that you can clear projects despite all this. We cleared or we facilitated clearance of five lakh crores worth of projects yeah. in fifteen months. They, they they say a bureaucrat is can only be as good or bad as the as the leader that they're working with. Now your you have you have worked with many. When I say with, I mean sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. Many chief ministers as well. 
Uh, let me start with the Chief Minister. You seem to have had the maximum run-ins with or the maximum negative impressions on or off is Mayavati, the BSP leader. Uh, talk about that time. Talk about that time because uh, not everybody has yet read your book. They will read the book. But I have had the occasion to read the book. So I want you to talk about it. Not very pleasant memory. Yes. You know. What is the abiding memory of working when uh, with Mayavati when she was Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh? Undercurrent of corrupt practices. How does that make her regime different from other regimes that would have also had corruption? Uh, you know, the levels that I saw shocked me. Hmm. The levels at which decisions were happening. So I was uh, her special secretary. So one of my jobs was also in one of the weeks I used to be the day officer. And I had the occasion to see a few things, you know. And it wasn't a good experience. It was sad. I mean, imagine a district magistrate with a briefcase walking into the room and leaving the briefcase behind. And when he comes out, I ask him, where is, what did you bring in the briefcase? He said, files are there. I said, DN to koi file laata nahi, Chief Minister ke paas. So it was writ large on his face. I said, you are demonstrating to her that all of us can do something which we should be doing. And then the expectation will be from others. So I, in my book, since you mentioned it, Encounters Politicians, I don't blame the politicians. I don't blame the politicians because they would be what they are in the context in which they're working. But it is not for the civil servants to do what they are doing. Because I'm, I'm a part of that family and I feel sad. You ask this question that civil servants are determined by the environment. Don't I don't agree. They well, say the honest Babu gets transferred. So be it. You do something else. For the IAS, every job is important. Every job is important. Why are you bothered? You know, transfer is an excuse that many of us use to hide our inefficiency. You know, I keep saying, don't treat Politician as a villain, which I discovered after 10 years in my career. I used to treat them as villains. Mm. Later on, I realized he has his own compulsions. He has his own limitations. Then I understood the difference between compromise and accommodation. And you should not compromise on anything illegal. But accommodation is important. Supporters of, of the BSP leader, Mayavati, say that she is judged more harshly then other leaders who do the same, they imply a certain kind of casteist bias, a certain kind of caricaturing of her as a leader. Uh, that when she, I remember this used to happen in the media, when, she, when her birthday was celebrated, when an iconography was created around her in those parks and so on that came up in Uttar Pradesh, there was a lot of criticism. But the same criticism, it was said then, was not applied to other leaders. You know, let, I'm not talking about people who I have not worked with. Let me right. compare Mayavati with, say, Kalyan Singh. Yeah. Both I worked, I was in her secretariat, I was in his secretariat. And I can't say what others did, they may have been corruption. You know, I saw one of the most honest politicians in Kalyan Singh. And thereafter, I joined Mayavati. So for me, it was chalk and cheese. I'll come to Kalyan Singh. But when you say what, what, what you carry from the Mayavati years for you is brazen corruption in that government. Is that what you're saying? You know, I didn't see corrupt practices per se, but, but I saw things which may have been corrupt. So, for example, I'll give you another example, which I've narrated in my book. Uh, I am again an officer on duty in the morning. She she calls me in. She's trying to read a file. So, she asked me, what is I told her, what is it? I said, madam, this is not the same. Okay, okay. Matter got over, I came and sit, mm. sat outside. Mm. An officer, couple of years senior to me, also in the secretariat, walks in later on, goes inside, and then she comes along with that officer. Are you saying that you can't do it? You can't do it. So she used do, another officer to how undercut do, so, so, you know, this never happened with Kalyan Singh. We told him this is incorrect, it was not done. No, there are two extremes. I mean, there could be the chief ministers in between, less, more corrupt, less mm. corrupt. Mm. For them, it would be hearsay for me. I am talking about what I personally sources have suffered. So I saw these two persons and that's why maybe I am more biased against Mayavati because I had seen Kalyan Singh earlier, totally an epitome of honesty. And here I saw a person who could do anything. Why? Uh, and indeed, in, in the same book, your admiration for Kalyan Singh does come through. What, what made him different from other politicians you've encountered? You know, it was difficult to visualize that you can have a politician like him, you know. Hmm. And I narrate incidents why I come to what I say. You know, I I remember I I got a call from a batchmate of mine who was chief development officer in his home district, and he says that his boy has a CDO car. So I was accompanying Mr. Kalyan Singh to an event. In those days, we didn't have mobile phones, no. Mm. So I mentioned to him that his boy has taken a CDO car. So he stopped. He said, "Go home. Went back home." 
घर से ही स्पोक टू समबडी वेरी एंग्री यूज टॉकिंग टू आई वॉज सिटिंग आउट साइड एंड देन ही केम आउट बाई द इवनिंग द वेकल एट बी रिटर्न दिस इज वन ऑफ द मेनी एग्जाम्पल्स दैट आई सो लाइक इन ट्रांसफर्स एंड पोस्टिंग इट्स टू बी अ रैकेट ऑफ ऑफ डॉक्टर्स इन यूपी ही सेट इट राइट ही डिड नॉट अलाउ इट टू हैपन सो वॉट आई सॉ इफ हिम पीपल से ही चेंज लेटर ऑन आई डोंट नो Whatever I have written is about my total personal experience, either with Kalyan Singh or my own. But when I think as a reporter of Kalyan Singh, the history books will say Kalyan yeah. Singh, and then they'll say Babri Babri Masjid demolition, right? I want you to talk about that. Then there have been so many theories. Yeah, so, Narasimha Rao looked the other way. Yeah. Was there a pact between Kalyan yeah. Singh and Narasimha Rao, a BJP leader and a I, Congress leader? I wouldn't know what was behind. I can tell you what was in front. Okay. On the day, sixth of December, it was a holiday. but my job was to go to his residence every day in the morning to brief him about the media coverage on the previous day on this particular day when i walk into his room he sitting alone usually he never sat alone because everyone was in ayodhya sitting there a bit forlorn a bit upset and then we were generally chatting and then on telephone he got news that the dome has come down he was he was so upset he immediately called mr advani hmm and he let it out really he you, let you, it out you witnessed that i saw it with my own eyes and my i heard it what did he own. say he said aap sab logo ko maine mana kiya tha ki is logo ko log ko ikatta na kijiye lekin aapne meri baat nahi mani these are his words and then he spoke to bharat singh chikawat that was a much longer chat because bharat singh chikawat was the chief minister of rajasthan same words he said ki aap log meri baat to mante hi nahi the main iska samadhan nikal raha tha aapko meri baat sunni chahiye thi and i know something about the samadhan he was doing i don't know much what was the samadhan? he was trying to engage with various groups minority groups and his solution was something which finally supreme court gave the that solution. is what you have argued that what kalyan singh was trying to do as up chief minister eventually supreme court ka faisla yes. kuch aisa hi nikla yes yes so why you know now i try and analyze you know i reflect on yeah i if i were in this place probably i would also think that way because i have become a chief minister of a state and i know if this comes down i'll lose my chief minister right why would he do that people argue no no he was under enormous pressure kalyan singh was under enormous pressure now as an outsider i can say he should have done this he should have done that he should have deployed more force this that and everything very easy to say maybe he should have but the fact what i heard and saw was this that he was extremely upset at that and then he says anil if paper law mai paper le aaya उन्होंने उस पर लिखना शुरू किया कि ये जो कुछ भी हुआ है इसका पूर्ण उत्तरदायित्व मैं लेता हूं किसी अन्य को लेटर ऑन आई एम टोल्ड इट टू स्टाइप दिन सेट बट ही सेट दैट सो आई वाज कंपेयरिंग दिस विद डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह नो द फैक्ट दैट डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह डिड नॉट टेक ओनरशिप यस बट कल्याण दैट्स लीडरशिप दैट्स लीडरशिप फॉर मी दैट्स लीडरशिप फॉर मी अ लीडर हैज टू टेक द रिस्पांसिबिलिटी लीडर हैज टू गिव क्रेडिट टू अदर्स बट इफ यू डोंट कम्युनिकेट If you don't speak, imagine in PNG. I'm let me. I'm digressing a bit since you talk about Manmohan Singh. You know, there PNG was a PNG is the project, project monitoring, monitoring group, group when yes. I was in the cabinet secretariat. When Manmohan Singh was prime, was the prime minister. minister. Sorry, yes. I should have yes. said that. Now we were getting clearances, but one minister, environment, forest minister, she was sitting on files worth fifty-four thousand crores, and this is a this is symbolic of how that government. You are talking about Jayanti Nataraj. Yes. So I sent a note to. cabinet secretary that this is happening and this will be another scam those were the days of scams nothing happened 15 days down the line i send another note nothing happened then i sent the third note to the cabinet secretary please inform the prime minister that someone has to speak to her i have sorted it out bureaucratically but if she doesn't sign the file how it can go then the cabinet secretary rings me up and tells me montek wants to talk to you montek singh alwal at that point in time was deputy chairman planning commission so i went over to meet him When I entered his room, Montek said, "Anil Swarup ji, you are doing wonderful job." I said, "Sir, I am very uh, disappointed. I want to go back to the state." Achha. He said, "Why?" I said, "Minister of the government is sitting on files. I feel helpless. She is not doing it." Then he asked me, "Have you spoken to the prime minister?" I said, "I have no access to him." Okay, I'll talk to him. Mm-hmm. Meeting ends. In the evening, the cabinet secretary speaks to me. He says, "Tumne Montek se kya keh diya?" हमने कहा सब कह दिया जो आपको बताया था सब कह दिया मैंने कहा बोले तभी प्राइम मिनिस्टर का फोन आया था मेरे पास वो कह रहे थे वाइज अनिल अपसेट देन आई आस्ट हिम आई होप यू टोल्ड हिम एवरीथिंग ही डेंट आंसर नथिंग हैपन ए लुक एट वे नेक्स्ट डे प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी टू द प्राइम मिनिस्टर रिंग्स मी अप एंड आस्क मी अनिल व्हाई आर यू सो अपसेट व्हाट इज हैपनिंग सो आई टोल्ड हिम सर दिस इज हैपनिंग दिस विल बी अनदर स्कैम 
बोले कैन यू सेंड मी द डिटेल्स सो आई टोल्ड आई आई टेल यू सेंड यू इन टेन मिनट्स हाउ कैन यू सेंड इट इन टेन मिनट्स आई सेड एवरी थिंग इज ऑन द पोर्टल आई हैव टू डाउनलोड इट्स एवरी थिंग ऑन द पोर्टल आई सेड दैट्स द प्रॉब्लम इफ इट गेट्स इन पब्लिक डोमेन देर इज अ प्रॉब्लम सो इसे भेजो मैंने भेज दिया कुछ नहीं हुआ यू नो दिस इज हाउ दैट गवर्नमेंट फंक्शन देन वॉट हैपन्स हाउ डिड इट हैपन in i had gone to a conference mr oscar fernandez late mr oscar fernandez who i had worked with very good relationship he was also invited he was nobody then so we as is my wont i had arrived early he also came earlier so we were chatting i told him sir um, i hope you are aware that this madam is taking money in the name of other madam i told him this in so many words yes i have written it in my book so he smiled and he said suna to maine bhi hai hmm I said, sir, that isn't it your duty to tell, madam? And I jokingly told him, sir, if the money is reaching her, it's fine. If the money is being taken in her name and not reaching her, then it's a tragedy. Seven days down the line, just in the context of our yeah. audience, before you come to what happened seven days, you're saying to Oscar Fernandez, tell Sonia Gandhi, yes, that Jayanti Natarajan and her colleague, in your estimation, are. basically taking bribes for clearing funds. i didn't use the word bribe i didn't i am say, summarizing yeah, yeah, in yeah. colloquial what were you yeah. implying in this yes obviously she was i mean the word around was jenty tax every one talked about time self used sorry which the Le- present Le- prime minister yes. then opposition leader used yes. in a speech so hmm. 7 days down the line she was shown the door she was removed from the cabinet if you recall jenty natarajan so i am i i gave this illustration to show to you that at that point in time there was so much indecision it's not that they didn't want but they were not i mean it's so many things were happening the prime minister should have taken action against those ministers yeah but he sat helplessly what has been your toughest phase as a bureaucrat my toughest phase as a bureaucrat was the first 3 months as co secretary because you're coming right after the alleged scam is all over the place and you have to oversee the auctions yes you know and Uh, the pressure was enormous the time was so little supreme court took 7 months to write a judgment i had to do auction in 5 months mm. you know it was shocker absolutely mm. but you know the good thing was the scene was so bad that it couldn't become worse so i thought anything that will happen i can talk away with that credit one of the things that you've said in an earlier interview to me but also elsewhere is that the mafia in the education sector is more lethal oh, than yes. the mafia in the coal Mining yes, sector. certainly. You know, when I was posted as school secretary, I rang up a friend of mine and asked him, "Kaisa hai sector? Is it gangs of Asipur dekhi hai kya?" <laughs> so when I got shifted from coal to uh, education, I thought I was going from dark dungeons of coal mines to the bright lights of school education. And to my utmost horror, I found that the mafias of school education were much worse because you know, in coal, mining was underground, mafias were overground. Yeah. In education, all the mafias are underground; they are not seen. White why, why are they so entrenched? They, they're so entrenched. आप राजस्थान देखिए अभी, जहाँ पे paper leak के बारे में आप legislation is promoting, uh, proposing life imprisonment and so on. Not needed. See, see, I'll tell you again since you I'll digress a bit because this is yes. a very important issue. Yes. We all believe by you know catching criminals and sending behind the bars we'll stop it. That is a very small way of doing it. Build systems. You know we don't build systems. Why hasn't anything happened? By way of coal scam or something after 2014, because we put in place an auction system that cannot be misused. Build systems. Why was health insurance scheme that was dumped for three years RSBY revived as Ayushman Bharat? Because we build systems there. It's systems. You know, we talk about corruption. We talk about people send, sending people to jail. We don't talk about system. Today we have technology to do that. Why should we use that technology? we don't use that because much of the corruption is an account of opacity opacity of processes make them totally transparent you know no matter how corrupt and inefficient i am to the public i'd like appear to be honest and efficient technology allows you to make me transparent process is transparent you know when i used to talk to mr modi about this he used to agree with me hmm. the question is who follows it yeah. i mean that's not my job what I, are the vested interests or who are the vested interests that are controlling the education mafia you know there are four or five sets of mafias and there are different sets of mafias not related to each other the biggest mafia that i write is the mafia of bed and dlet colleges mm-hmm. there are 16000 colleges 4000 do not exist or exist in a room and they can give you a degree now i am glad that the national education policy attempts to take care of this problem that is problem number one the biggest mafia mm-hmm. and they are so deeply entrenched you know the chairman national council for teacher education had to resign because these guys went to court 
and courts issued orders against him and he in disgust resigned so it's it's a very tough mafia the second mafia is the mafia of publishers the textbook publishers yes and i have written how much money the government used to lose at that point in time because they saw to it that the ncert books came late and hence their books could be sold that's the second biggest mafia the all the publishers came to meet me what are you saying so i explain this you mean what we used to call kunjis not kunjis books textbooks you know ncert books are one third or one fourth the cost of the other books that are sold in the market i see so if ncert delays its publication and books don't come on time then people will buy these books from the publishers i see and the difference which i had calculated roughly was 3000 crores per annum so, so it means that ncert is being incentivized some people somebody in ncert was being incentivized no, to not publish no i i examined at length ncert was not being incentivized there were inefficiencies there which in that particular year we corrected it that year we got the books on time and i was under enormous pressure because these guys were losing because they had got their books printed in the hope that ncert will get delayed ncert brought those books and they couldn't sell the books so it has to be done through a system again so this was second mafia the third mafia is the nakal mafia hmm. shocking hmm. i i remember when i was subdivisional magistrate my driver told me sir aapko aaj ek nazara dikhate hain so i didn't know what he meant le gaya subah subah mujhe wahan mein pahuncha as soon as my jeep arrived at that center where examination was going people started jumping out of the windows and going out i couldn't believe what's going going on he told me sir ye nakal karane aaye the ab aapki gaadi aayi to bhag rahe hain and it is a racket now kalyan singh in his first stint tried to do it yogi adityanath has done it now as a consequence of which believe me i am talking of 2018 when he did it for the yeah. first time 10 lakh students did not appear because he, they thought that they could not cheat maro nakal yeah. so it's another mafia because they are auctioned out those centers and mahan nakal kar imagine what sort of students we get how much has changed i think up in that sense has changed quite and Be- bihar i guess remains a problem state i don't know so much about bihar now because i left about 5 right. years ago but up changed in 2018 you uh, as a civil servant have also written recently about your concern that institutions are not as autonomous as they were actually set up to be so you've spoken about the judiciary you've spoken about the election commission Talk a little bit about that. I think on your Twitter feed you said, you know, if things had gone according to plan, Ashok Lavasa would have been in election commission. You've spoken about, um, you know, Justice Ranjan Gogoi ending up becoming a member of uh, parliament. This has not happened only now. Earlier, M S Gill, who was in the who was the chief election commissioner, became a minister in the U P A government. So, ये नई बात तो नहीं है. नई बात institutionalization of destruction of institutions. Let's put it this way. Hmm. it is happening in a manner you know ms gill was a b- bad case in the sense that he should not have joined politics in my personal view anyone holding constitution post should not take any assignment less mm-hmm. let alone join politics uh-huh. they should not mm-hmm. see if that was a wrong but you can't justify the current wrong by saying that it had wrong earlier but the current wrong is even worse look at this justice gogoi's case Here is a gentleman who holds a press conference against the sitting Supreme Court judge. You and I would be behind the bars if we did that. He didn't. He becomes the Chief Justice himself. Then there is a sexual harassment case against him. How can there be a compromise in a sexual harassment case? If the lady is telling a lie, she should be behind the bars. If she is correct, then I should be behind the bars. See, there can't be a compromise in a sexual harassment case. One of them had to be wrong. It was compromised. Then lo and behold, after he retires, becomes MP. look at the context in which he was operating he was corporate operating in the context of some very critical decisions of the court he gave those decisions he gets rewarded there's another judge who becomes governor your supreme court justice becomes a governor so what is this happening there is an attempt to influence which is very visible look at election commission what happens in election commission election commission is a body which we all admired you know uh, days of session and thereafter also despite mr ms gill no one pointed a finger on that bias mm. now what is happening ashok lavasa's case is a classic case of family being harassed so that he could conveniently be moved out because he would have become chief election commissioner these things are not good for institutions whether this institutions or other institutions and my question only is that as someone who has seen politics over the decades didn't this always happen i asked this cynic i don't when i look back at the judiciary and the emergency during indira gandhi yes so that was completely the darker staff of the judiciary i i totally agree with you because if you compare with the emergency then it's the same 
but is that the right comment? No, I am just giving yeah. the most obvious so, example. So, so there have been such cases. There have been judges who have been yes. impeached in parliament. There have been. I yes, mean, I could there have been. Examples but also. if you look at the context now and the way it is happening, you know, election commission. It's not that you mentioned about MS Gill's case. That was also a case he joined and became a minister. Yes. Very unfortunate. But if that sustains over a period of time, and if there is a general belief which appears to be the belief that if you don't do the bidding, then you could be in trouble. So then the institutions decay. You know, election commission was one institution which we were really proud of. Even now, some of the commissioners, I know one of them, an absolutely gem, fantastic officer. He's there. It's not that they are not there. But if the general impression is that if you don't do the bidding, there could be trouble for you, it impacts the decision making process. So my view is, and I have again written about it, that a civil servant, first of all, should not apply for a job. There should be an independent institution like UPSC to provide a panel so that the civil servant is not beholden to a politician for occupying that position. If that be the case, then things will change. So you can have that institution which recommends that out of these three, you select anybody, whoever you want to. But even then, if you pick up on families to harass somebody, yeah. which is not done. I have to ask you in the end about the lateral entry debate. What do you feel I about have, you it know, as a viewpoint? I'm, I'm, I'm personally not against lateral entry. If, if it is there, so be it. But there has to be a system through which they come. It can't be that I like this person. Like If they are coming through UPSC, which in the last instance it was so, which is very fair, why not lateral entry? And look at the, it's been unnecessarily being debated. But what are we trying to solve through? That's, I'm not against it. But let's see whether the objective is being fulfilled. The objective is to bring in expertise. Uh, literal expertise. Again, I am not against that. But my fundamental view of the IS is that they should not become experts. The reason is very simple. You know, as you go up the ladder, what the only expertise that you require is managing men and women. Not your expertise in a particular area. It doesn't work at all. Yeah. As Secretary Cole, I didn't have to do much with Cole. Mm. I had to get things done. So the job of the top leader is to create an environment where people can perform, not do it himself. And hence, by talking of expertise, Take, for example, what expert should finance secretary be? Budget? Insurance? I mean, there's so many areas where you can be expert. You don't have to necessarily be that. You know, look at the present RBI governor. I mean, people have all sorts of opinion about him. But as being an IS officer, he's able to carry people along with him. You know, that's what you learn it's as you go along. period of peace between the government and the RBI. After no, that, of time. course, is a different issue. But what I'm trying to say here is, all, even in the private sector, the top-notch positions, ask what Ratan Tata does. Does he does engineering? Yeah. Ask Indra New what you're doing, any specialization. Ask any CEO of the private sector, what is he doing? He's managing men and women. That's the expertise that you should develop. You know, if I try to develop some expertise, I'll compete with some other expert, yeah. which I'll never be able to do. Yeah. I believe in that, that we should not unnecessarily go in for expertise. You should have domain knowledge, which you can acquire. But expertise is something you can't acquire at that stage, and why should you acquire? Yeah. So finally, uh, the very s sweet nugget uh, in in your up in your book is about the first use of a photocopy machine, uh, which I was really <laughs> stuck by in the early nineties. Just look at how swiftly technology has yeah, changed. Yeah. In nineteen ninety one, that photocopy machine even yes, yes. to files yes. manually. Yes, yes. Yes. I just had to share that story. I just have to ask you, what is your proudest moment as a bureaucrat? I've asked you your most difficult one. Let yeah. me ask you your proudest moment. My proudest moment was almost fulfilling. No, no, I'll tell you. My proudest moment was, and I'll take a minute just to explain. I, when Mr. Obama took over as the president of the US, one of his advisors rang me up. He said that why can't you come and make a presentation to us on your health insurance? Scheme? They were having problems. I said our context is very different. What will I do? He insisted. So in one of my visits to Washington, where I had to go to the World Bank. I went to Brookings Institute where I made this presentation where the advisors were there, government officers were there and there were also people from Gates and yeah. Bill Gates and Melinda Gates, Bill Gil and uh, Rockefeller Foundation and others. So after this presentation, as I was having sipping a cup of tea, this guy from Gates Foundation walks up to me and asks me, Mr. Suroop, you seem to be very passionate about this health insurance scheme. What does the government give you beyond your salary? Yes. So I said, well, uh, what do you get? You help a number of people and you give millions of dollars to poor countries. What do you get out of it? He said, well, that's a job. But more than that, we derive a lot of satisfaction out of, of the good, yeah. of the help that we give to the poor people. I said, you answered your own question. The RSBY is meant for the poorest of the poor. 
many of whom would have been dead but for this scheme. So the good wishes of those that survived and the families come back to me somehow, anyhow, that's good enough a kick for me to do what I'm doing. Then I narrated an incident, which probably is my Bharat Ratna moment. Mm. I explained to him that I used to visit these small uh, hospitals which were abandoned. In one of those visits, I was talking to a beneficiary patient. I suddenly heard a very feeble voice from behind. With that guy, it was a conversation in English, but I'll tell you what the conversation was. As I turned back, I saw a very old lady who would not sit, was calling me, waving that smart card. Someone had told her that I had something to do with that scheme. I went to her and I bent down and asked her, Mother Ji, you are She tells me, Beta, I am in a lot of pain, but the hospital has taken care of me. Then I said, Mother Ji, you will be fine, you will go to your She said, I don't have a house, I was sick. Now my age is so much, I will go to the top of the house. I said, no, no, you will be fine. It's carried on 15 seconds. And then she made a remarkable statement. She tells me, Upar Wales ja ke ek baad jaroo kohongi. Tumhari scheme bohut achi hai. I call it my Bharat. That was the best moment of my life. And I have got many such Bharat Ratnas in my career. Well, that, that's a wonderful story to end this conversation on. Anil Saroop, uh, we look forward to your next book, which is all about your encounters with politicians and chief ministers. It makes for a fascinating read. I've had a preview access, but I hope many listeners and watchers of this podcast are able to also read it soon as the book makes its way into the market. Thank you so much for talking. Thank you.